Okay guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be doing um, the M52 versus the M54 showdown of the last inline six engines that BMW ever made. And obviously I've been wanting to do this video based on the fact that many people always ask me what one they, they should get, M54, M52. So what I'm going to do is, as I've got both, we're going to do a comparison showing you what goes wrong on each engine and the prices on each of them and usually if one's more reliable than the other. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go outside and we're going to put them both together and what we're going to do is we're going to look at both of them and then I'm going to show you what one is more reliable and what, cheap, what is cheapest to actually run and affordable in this day and age, even today. Okay guys, so here you have the um, M52 engine, as you guys know, which is my E60 with the M52 engine, which is the 530i engine. And over here, we have the M54 engine. So as you'll see, first off, they're very kind of similar the only thing obviously this one's missing is obviously the big vanos adjusters right there as you'll see which is like right here the valve cover hangs off more because of the vanos system being always a system here with all the solenoids instead of the solenoids being here now as you know bmw rector have done all this and rechanged the whole system and got the adjusters built on inside the engine and put the solenoids down here that pumps the oil up to the adjusters itself so obviously as you see the engines here are completely different and obviously as you'll know the m54 here has one disser my m52 has two dissers down here now that was the whole gain over the difference of power now that's what i'm going to speak to you about when you bought this car in m sport which this one is you get 231 bhp if you bought this car 330i standard edition which is like you the guys get in the us that's only 193 bhp that's what makes the m sport over the normal standards that's why the standards are a load of crap same for the m52 if you buy the m52 i mean sorry the e60 here with the standard edition which again the americans get you only get into this old engine which is the m54 inside it with 231 brake where with the m52 you're going to get just 258 bhp on this not 268 so as you know, on the M52, the oil filter housing gasket leaks, which you've seen me do on them already. And I've done this on my one. As I say, I missed out a lot of videos on my one because of the fact that I did everything before I started YouTube. So that, that was all done on my one. You also will see the van of solenoids, as you guys know, I replaced them with genuine BMW dealer ones at a cost of 300 pound. The oil filter gasket was only 10 pound. The two disses, as you'll see here, I found one second hand and it was basically brand new. The guy bought it before his car decided to blow the pistons and he ended up getting rid of it. So I've got the new disser valve right there and obviously a brand new one down there for the dual of them. I've obviously got a performance air filter in here as well, which ain't needed, but I advise doing it. Obviously, as you guys know, these engines suffer with the hydraulic lifter tick on them. It's not so much common on mine now because I've sorted that problem with a certain fluid that does it. As you guys know, the Forte hydraulic lifter treatment really works well for these cars and that's been done. I've also changed the valve cover on these. These are known to leak, as well as the PCV. They're known to go bad. Um, apart from that on these engines, these engines are actually quite reliable in terms of li li reliability. They're not so problematic as the um, other engines. As I say, the M54 suffers with the same problem. So PCV, this are, the vacuum lines, which on the M52 you don't really have that many vacuum lines. Obviously the Vanos system itself, the whole system, um, valve cover leaks, ignition coils, you name it. This car's got the same stuff as what that one has. Obviously the throttle body boot, as you guys are aware, splits and cracks from the idle control valve causing it to run, which this one has the built-in idle control valve on the throttle body itself. So it's actually easy. This engine is actually easier to work on than this engine. I am much prefer working on this engine. I can strip this engine a lot quicker than I can this one. Um, that's just my, my philosophy. Other people will probably say, this engine's easy, it's better than the other two. I don't agree. I, could, I agree this one is better to work on. This one is more reliable, yes, and more cheaper to maintain. This one's a lot cheaper to maintain. In a sense that everything is cheap. The valve cover gasket you can get for like 30 pound. The disser valve you can get for about 50 pound. I mean, the throttle body, but it was only 15 pound. Do you know what I mean? Things are cheap on this car. Even the fan clutch and the coupling was only like £50 altogether. Where on this car, you got 300 just for the solenoids, £10 for the um, oil filler gasket, um, nearly £50 for the valve cover gasket, 
110 pound each disavalve so that's 200 pound just on the manifold water pump another 350 pound with the thermostat you know the price goes up high on these cars but these cars are actually very reliable and very strong yes they use a lot more oil yes everything's harder to get to especially the water pump the water pump is a nightmare to get to and hence why a lot of people don't do it as you guys know as well you've got all your common problems on these with the air comm system as i've showed you in my, my previous videos which is down there the heater control valve which always goes bad on most cars the webasto as most people call it and the other one sits i believe right down here on the e46 as well as you'll see there's another one down there these are all the heater control valves you have to be careful from these m54s as i'm saying though these cars are very much reliable and the inline sixes are these are maybe got to remember guys these are the last um inline six is bmw ever made and the only ones that are naturally aspirated as bmw have now gone turbocharged so overall this is a much cheaper engine to maintain a very 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 good engine as well and it's like i say hard to work on not as reliable as the m52 it suffers piston ring failure the m54 this one can suffer valve stem seal failure if you get the m52 b25 engine so be careful of that the m52 b30 engine is the one that didn't suffer with that because they put more power into it now like i say we don't have any problems with throttle body boots splitting on this one or anything like that you do suffer with the common oil leaks which is across all bms like the sump gasket leaking and things like that and water getting in the boxes the most common problem on these cars is electrics electricals on the e60s compared to the e46 where the e46 doesn't really suffer much electrics i know you guys in the us get a lot of the problems with the gm5 um going out and water getting in your car but again we don't get that here our main common culprit for water on the e60s is getting water into this brake server we don't get any ecu box because as you see right there our ecu box is over the other side so our water always ends up here and the same on the e60 like i said to you guys it always ends up there and our ecu box is over there I don't know why that is that just how it is on these cars like i say apart from that this car is actually a very very good engine to maintain it's very easy to service as well um everything's easily accessible on this engine even to get the engine out it's very easy you just got to be careful that this one obviously strips the head bolts um if you let it overheat and the same for this one as well this one will pull the head bolts because this engine here has got the aluminium valve cover which is better than the plastic one but longevity time if it overheats it's not that's the only back down for about having the aluminium engine this one on the other hand does the same thing pulls the thread bolts out if you let it overheat um the only reason i prefer this engine and i'll tell you guys why is i prefer to have a dipstick then obviously a computer are telling me when the oil levels fall but if you get the e60 with the m54 engine um it actually comes with a dipstick and an oil level sensor inside your car so you get both that's what i did like about the m54 and the e60 compared to the m52 but the m52 is a way way more powerful engine i don't know if it's because of the weight because it's all aluminium or just because of the three-stage manifold but like i say this one makes 258 bhp um and like i say it, this car is very very quick for what it is and like i say you can't fault it like i say most common oil leaks and things are all because of of the oil filter housing gaskets that leak onto the belts and as you know derail your belts or because of your sump gasket or because of your valve cover or your pcv blowing that's another thing the pcv is very easy to get to on that compared to that engine i know you can do it the manifold on this one you can you this one i can take the manifold off i don't even mind doing that on this car at all that's how easy it is but as i say the majority of the problems on these are because of oil leaks um oil leaks are common across all bmws you will not get a bmw with no oil leaks they, um you guys have just got to remember if you ever buy one of these make sure it comes with full service to make sure it's been looked after especially the m52 m52 is a very high maintenance engine to maintain because parts are still so expensive they are coming down slightly on the water pumps and things but i don't see it coming down as quick as it did on the m54 for a very long time because the m54 now is completely gone and been outdated parts are going complete down on this car and obviously this very easy to maintain so more people are getting them for classics so I'm, I've got a feeling parts are going to rise on this. So if I was you, I would go and stock up on your parts on this engine, especially because I've got a feeling the parts are going to rise on this dramatically. I mean, I think only already over here, people are already converting this, the viscous fan to an electric fan at the front and getting rid of that. And that's starting to go up because they're becoming hard to get hold of. But like I say, this one usually suffers. Like I say, you're going to get the old coilant leaks. Everything's easy to change on this. Everything, the little water neck here, remember to change that. It's not hard to do as well. Math sensors, they go bad on every car. The same as on the M54, they're known to go bad. But like I say, in my time of driving BMs, I've not had a math sensor go bad. Ignition coils as well on this engine. They go as well. I replaced all six when I bought this car. And since then, I've had no problems. Obviously, I only use Bosch. I only use name brands. I don't use Chinese junk on my cars never have never will and the same as you guys see me for this everything's very built in on this and 
again, I won't use Chinese parts. And if I find out that if I found out that this was um, Chinese, I would have changed that as well for a name prior. I wouldn't have left that in the car. That even though it runs fine, I wouldn't have allowed it. Now that's what you've got to factor in, guys. When you do buy these cars, make sure you don't use Chinese parts because Chinese parts will fail. And when they fail, they will leave you stranded. If you're gonna, you can't expect to buy a luxury car which was 40, 50 grand new and expect to cheat it cheap. It just doesn't happen. It will not happen. You have to factor that in mind. If you're gonna run it cheap, you're gonna end up with the problems. Back to this M52 engine though. As I say, the majority of the problems on these are electrical related and computerized, but overall this engine makes very, very good power. And as I said, you do have your camshaft sensor problems on them. You do have that same on the M54, but the difference is it's very all easily accessible on this engine and everything's easy to get to. Where on the M54, it's quite hard because as you see, the engine's quite, well, like a big, big bulky engine here. Where compared to this one, it's not, but then on saying that, that's what makes this one overall stronger than the M52 for that reason. So guys, there you have it. Now I've just done the M52 versus the M54 reliability of the last and the best inline six cylinder engines that BMW have ever produced. You've now seen it there. Um, obviously, as I said to you, M54 is cheaper to maintain and cheaper to run. M52 is more powerful, but more expensive to run. So when you go to look at them, you have to factor in two things. Can you afford it? Do you want the do you want the newer problems? Can you do it with electrical problems? Can you do with the expense of the M52? M54 you've got to factor in is just that, like I said, can you do with the low down power? Can you do it's an old engine, it's old technology, but it's more reliable, more cheaper to maintain, it's a headache to work on. M52, on the other hand, is very easy to work on. Well, I find it very easy. Most people will tell me I'm wrong and that um, like I say, the M54 is very easy. I find the M52 very, very, very super easy, that engine to work on. Like I say, the M54, I find a complete pig to work on, and I wouldn't want to work on that ever again. Where the M52, I have no problem if my PCV went taking that out back again, or doing anything I need to to that engine, taking the whole engine out if I needed to. Because that engine is a very, very easy engine to work on. Like I say, but you guys have got to factor that in. Do you want the expense, the added expense of the M52, or do you want the cheapness of the M54 and reliability? To be fair with you, the M54 is more reliable because you can change the water pump and change the thermostat. Most people, when they buy an M52 engine, can't change the water pump, don't know when it's been done, then pull it off for so long because it's such a hard part and expensive part to get that most people just pull it off until they've got the money and then by the time they've got the money, the car's already overheated. With the M54, the parts are so cheap that you can just go and buy them whenever you need to and do it yourself because you can get there and do it. So it does make a lot more sense. You've got less problems with it overheating. Yes, oil leaks are not major and they can always be sorted on the M54. But as you guys know, the sump gaskets always leak on these. So there's no point always thinking, oh, it's got a sump gasket leak when you go to buy one, thinking, oh, it's got a gasket leak because it's just normal on them. They're always gonna have gasket leaks. Even the valve cover leaks, the oil filter housing leaks, power steering hoses leak, that's just how these BMs are. They leak from everywhere. Nobody knows why, nobody knows what to do with them. That's just how they are. The best thing you can do is replace the pipes and that's it. After 100K, these things do need replacing. Like it or lump it. And the same with the M52. But like I said to you, with the M52, you, with the M54, you can get away with using Chinese parts. With the M52, you cannot. Them computers, BMW, let me tell you now from working with them, um, working and um, knowing what BMW done with these, they program these cars that it can only take their parts. They're, no Chinese manufacturer can make the parts pump at a full rate and full voltage that BMW's parts can. BMW are very smart when they build these cars. They built them in mind that you will not be able to use cheap parts. That's the way they built it because they wanted to keep people away from them. Like with the M54, they couldn't. That's why they've done that on, on purpose to keep you away from it. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you ain't subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe. Please like the video. I need all the likes possible. This is BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.